Right, Lord, take pity on me. Show me the way to swim. Tony Williams, Elvin Jones, Max Roach. But, how, how, how? Earlier in the year, I wrote down my goals in my practice diary, and one goal that stood up above the rest was to be able to keep up with Tony Williams on the Miles Davis album, Four and More. No easy feat. Many of the tracks on that album are played around 300 BPM, and Tony's signature comp in is a perfect demonstration of why he's one of the greats. So, I did what any sane hunk of bones and muscle would do. I dusted off a Zildjian K and I hit the shed. Playing at 300 BPM until my hands cramped up, barely able to tickle a note out on the snare drum without it all falling apart. Why, Tony, why? Tony Williams was a teenager at the time of these recordings, so I've been playing drums for longer than he was alive for at this point. So surely I can keep up, right? Wrong, for now. And that's when it dawned on me. I need to practice what I preach when I'm teaching drum lessons. If you can't make it groove at 260 BPM, why are you playing at 300? If you can't make it groove at 270 BPM, why are you playing at 300? Let's keep it simple. Slow the f down. In this moment, I realized it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. So I set about making this sweet sheet of metal my companion. <laughs> Oh, you. Tell me more, my friend. My blood brother. <laughs> my partner in crime. And I set to work on a few simple concepts to push my ride feel in the right direction. Section one, groupings. Firstly, groups of two. For this, personally, I like to use the push-pull technique. You can play this in either a shuffle pattern or if you straighten the rhythm out, you can get longer, endless lines and notes. Next, groups of three. This is obviously classic for up-tempo ride cymbal playing. Personally, I play it similar to a push-pull, but I let the middle note bounce. So fingers out on the first note, rebound on the second note, snap the fingers in on the third note. There's a great video of John Riley talking about this technique, which I'll link down below. Honestly, that video is the way that I learned to play this technique. Next, we've got groups of five for that real Tony Williams playing. There's different ways that people like to play this technique. Personally, I like to do a group of three plus a group of two. Section two, technique. When I first learned to bounce my double strokes, drum teachers would tell me, you need to work with the balance and the rebound of your stick. You and your trusty steed must become at one with gravity. This is something that I've been really focused on again whilst working on my ride feel. Now if you zoom in a little closer. I'll give you three tips that have really helped me. One, do your best to keep your little finger on the stick. Sometimes when I watch back footage of me playing, I look like I'm sipping tea with the queen. Keeping your little finger on the stick gives you so much more power, so much more consistency. Two, find your balance point on the stick. Every pair of sticks is different, but playing with your hand too low on the stick really works against you. Go too high and it's a bloody nightmare to even get started. Adjust as you play and experiment. Three, watch the position of your stick in your hand. Sometimes I start to notice that the weight of my stick has gone slightly onto the bottom section of my fingers. You know, the finger pillows. And just being conscious of this and making a slight adjustment back onto the middle part of my finger makes a huge impact on the rebound and the response of your stick. Now you don't need to be a technique connoisseur, but it does help to think about these things. Section three, tempo. This one sounds kind of obvious when talking in general about pushing up your tempo, but it's worth being as precise as you can about tracking your tempos. Push up in small jumps like 5 BPM, be a real stickler for making notes. Sit on each tempo for a long time, don't let yourself off the hook. Become a real nerd for it. Are you even a nerd for caring and being committed to getting good at your craft? If so, sign me up for your army of nerds my friend, but just know, I resent that. One thing that I found particularly helpful is doing sprinting exercises at tempos that feel just out of reach. Just playing quarter notes to start you off. No matter what, you can always return here. You're just going for a jog, man. Just taking a stroll. And then busting out your jazz time for as long as you can until your right hand is burned. Before returning to the slow lane for a nice little potter with your bestie. I found this really helpful for pushing up my stamina. 
This is my main practice routine at the moment, and although it's still a work in progress, honestly, I can feel the difference and the improvement every single day that I play. So today, I just wanted to share a little ramble with you, show you what I've been working on, and just talk a little bit about practice. As an offering to the Rhyme Lords. See you next week.